Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Don Shoemaker and I want to talk to you today about prayer. This is going to be the first in six studies of the all-important prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to see why Jesus gave us this prayer and we're going to find out what it means. So my prayer would be that over these six times as we look at this prayer with the video messages that your prayer life as well as mine will be improved because we look at the prayer that Jesus gave us to pray. Now I have to start by saying I have a struggle and it's a struggle of prayer. Perhaps I should introduce myself as saying hi my name is Don and I struggle with prayer. Could you put your name there also? Now for many years I prepared a sermon every single Sunday. I would turn on my computer early in the morning and while it was booting up I would have a little prayer time. I would pray for a number of requests and I would conclude that prayer time by praying the Lord's Prayer. Now my lifestyle has changed since I'm not preaching every Sunday and I have yet to find a really comfortable way for having regular prayer. So I need the lessons that I'm going to present and I believe you might find that you need them also. We're going to take a, a fresh look at prayer and as we do so I want you to know we are in good company because the disciples also had a struggle with prayer. They came to Jesus once and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And they had two good examples before them. Jesus, who had just had a time of prayer, we read that in Luke chapter 11 and verse 1, and also John the Baptist, because the disciples said to Jesus, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So there are two examples to help us learn how to pray, Jesus and John the Baptist. Jesus uh, gave a response to this question, Lord, can you teach us how to pray? And his response is what we call the Lord's Prayer. Now the Lord's Prayer has been a feature of the Christian church for almost 18 centuries. And can you imagine just for a moment on any Sunday how many millions and millions of people around the world pray the Lord's Prayer. And yet, Praying the Lord's Prayer is probably not as extensive as it should be. I came across this quote. This awesome reverence before the Lord's Prayer was a reality in the ancient church, which unfortunately has been lost to us in our day for the most part. Now maybe that statement's a little excessive, but I think the use of the Lord's Prayer needs to occur more and more in our churches if we really claim to have a worship experience that would be taught by the Lord Jesus Christ and please the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's a thought from Martin Luther. Martin Luther said at the beginning of the day, say the Lord's Prayer, say the Apostles Creed, make the sign of the cross and go on your day rejoicing. Today and for the remaining times of this study we're going to examine this prayer one phrase at a time and I pray that God would bless this effort. But today, we're simply going to have an introduction to the Lord's Prayer. So let me give you five key lessons about the Lord's Prayer. Here's the first one. Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer so we could avoid meaningless prayer forms and develop good prayer habits. Now in Matthew chapter 6, which is one location for the Lord's Prayer, Jesus gives the Lord's Prayer as an antidote against meaningless prayer forms. Then in Luke chapter 11, Jesus gives the Lord's Prayer as an answer to his disciples' question, Lord, would you please teach us how to pray? So we're going to look at meaningless prayer when we look at Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to look at good prayer habits when we look at Luke chapter 11. A second key lesson, the Lord's Prayer gives us both a pattern to follow and actual words to say. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9, Jesus said, pray this way. In other words, he's giving us a pattern to follow. But in Luke chapter 11, verse, verse 2, Jesus says, say this. Imagine that. Here is a prayer I want you to say. Many of us have been raised to think that if you say a prayer, that's some kind of an empty repetition and we don't fall into that pattern, but Jesus actually says we can say these very words. So we can use the Lord's Prayer 
as a model prayer to repeat, or we can use it as a pattern of prayer simply to pray along these same lines as Jesus taught us. Now there's a third key lesson about the Lord's Prayer. Matthew's version contains phrases that you don't find in Luke's version. I suppose Jesus taught different versions of the Lord's Prayer on many, many different occasions. Matthew records one particular form and Luke does another. And here's something else very significant about, about Matthew's record of the Lord's Prayer. He gives us a little postscript. He explains forgiveness to us. He explains that petition that we are to forgive and we are to ask God for His forgiveness. And so a good assignment for us is to put Matthew chapter 6 and Luke chapter 11 side by side and look at the Lord's Prayer in both of these chapters and see the differences between Matthew and Luke. Number four, the Lord's Prayer has, first of all, an opening address. Hallowed be your name, Jesus says to the Heavenly Father. And second, it has six petitions. Three are petitions toward God for the honor of His name, and three petitions focus upon our needs. And so there are six petitions, two pairs of three in the Lord's Prayer. Now, I want to say, and this may be new to some of you, it has nothing to do with the truth or accuracy of the Bible. It's a manuscript issue. But the traditional doxology at the end of the Lord's Prayer, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, that is not in the earliest manuscripts. Now that doesn't mean that it has any falsehood in it. I think it's a completely true doxology, and it certainly doesn't mean we can't sing it. But the traditional doxology at the end of the Lord's Prayer, in many ways that we have said it, is not part of the original manuscripts of Scripture. And then number five, the Lord's Prayer is a reminder to us that God always comes first. Before we pray about our own needs, we pray to God that He will be glorified. God comes first, our needs come second. Very similar to what we call the two great commandments, the two love commandments. Love God with all your heart and then love your neighbors as yourself. Jesus calls that the second commandment. It is equal to the first in importance, but it always is the second commandment. God's uh, love, our love toward God comes first and our love toward our neighbor comes second. Our love toward God comes first, and our love toward our neighbor comes second. So these are five key points to keep in mind as we look at the Lord's Prayer, and we will begin to look at that in the next, the second of six lessons the next time. God bless you as we struggle in prayer together.